Congratulations to both of you on the film. I found it really deeply moving and then also unexpectedly really urgent as well in its um, uh, uh, one of its themes, one of its messages. Um, and um, is it okay to call you Lance? Yeah, please. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I guess from the film, that seemed like the best thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I won't yeah. notice either way, to be yeah. honest. But yeah, okay. <laughs> you can call me anything you want. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> as long as it's a good question. Um, yeah. Now, we, um, it's clear from the film that you're a captivating storyteller, and we already kind of know that from your TV and your film work. But um, when did you realize that you had your own really like compelling story to tell, and what, why did you want to share it with the world? Um, I mean, I, 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 I guess at a very early age, I realized that I was growing up in an incredibly different way. And, and people always found it curious that, you know, these three little boys were being raised Mormon in a very not Mormon area by a, a woman who couldn't move from the chest down. And, um, you know, and, and I also knew I was a gay kid in a world, you know, in a military Mormon Southern family. So I was like, well, this is a pretty extreme little story. Um, I wouldn't know what story to tell in the memoir um, in, until much later. And, and really it was, it was when I saw that my mother was right that this storm, the storm clouds were gathering um, that would visit the nation in terms of, you know, just this, these, this increasing divide between, between people of different political persuasions that was trickling down into families, ours included, and, and her beseeching me to, to try and keep those bridges standing, to follow her example, which was always to share space with people that she disagreed with and to ask questions um, more than just stating her beliefs. And, um, and, and so that, just after she passed away, particularly come 2016 and beyond, it felt like it just kept picking up more and more urgency. She was right, sadly, the storm did come and it has been incredibly destructive, not just to you know uh, families uh, that are built uh, of people of different political persuasions, um, but certainly that has affected our community, our country, but also it's that sort of idea that we can't be with people who are too different or that we disagree with has also shattered the queer community in many ways. Separating the L from the G from the, you know, B from the T and weakened us as well. So I, I think, you know, even from 2019 until Laurent said, hey, let's make a documentary about it. I, I kept thinking, God, it's, it's getting worse. It just keeps getting worse. Uh, it's a global problem. It's affecting uh, you know, our countries, our families, and now even our queer community. And, and we got to see if we can't start to be grown up enough and brave enough to share space again. Yes, absolutely. Because I mean, the, the rhetoric seems to get more and more uh, extreme, doesn't it? And I, one of the reasons that I, I really um, responded to the film is that, um, you know, there's so much talk of uh, division in the country, but there are very few people offering solutions to that. Yeah. Um, was that something that you saw in um, in the book, uh, Laurent? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I responded to it on a, a very kind of emotional level, which is always a good sign, right? Uh, um, where I, I saw part parts of myself in in this story, even though it's very unique and singular to to Lance. Um, I feel also a debt of gratitude to to him for all that he's done. Um, not only as a storyteller, but on on all the fronts that he's that he's touched. Uh, um, so uh, I felt it was almost uh, a mission for me uh, to to make this film. I had been looking for a story like this. I was just finishing up a film and 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 looking desperately for something that that spoke to to me as a gay man as well you know wanting to tell those stories uh, um and and when i landed on, on on lance's story i couldn't believe all that he had gone through and that that it was like through one single person and and that felt extraordinary to me um there was also of course you know being someone who loves visuals that there was a, a real cinematic journey to be had here uh, uh, th that that felt uh, from from this little kitchen to the 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 st stage of the Oscars. So I I felt oh my God that 
there's just no way people are not going to identify with that and be inspired by it because I know that I was. Um, and, and the journey was, was uh, within 14 days, you know, we really scheduled this sort of going back to childhood and, and ended up in LA and it was, it was super hard, but I have to say, boy, I would, uh, I would never trade that for, it was, it was like literally, you know, getting a window into something that, uh, is super powerful. Yeah. And and Lance, did, did you have any new discoveries when you were um, making this film? And I imagine, you know, telling these stories verbally out loud rather than um, writing them down was probably quite a different experience. And then also, as Laurent was saying, you actually physically went to some locations that were meaningful to you. Like you, you and your brother Todd stood by that stream where you played as kids when you were trying to be away from the home. Uh, yeah, you nailed it. I mean, it was, um, it, it, I, when I was writing the book, I was at least in the safety of my home uh, behind this laptop. Uh, and, and then now, as we, as we filmed it, Laurent wanted me to go back to the places where it happened and be with the people who probably weren't going to see eye to eye with me to reverse my mother's uh, uh, course, which was to go from a conservative world to a more progressive one and see if it would work in reverse. And, um, and I had done some of that before I wrote the book that's in the book, but now we were doing it in an even more divided time in a, in a sort of post 2016 time. And, um, you know, I guess I was, I was surprised by just how difficult it was emotionally you know, uh, it all sounds good and well to share space with people who disagree with you and that that has the potential, not always, but the potential to create progress and build a bridge. But uh, it, it isn't, it, it, was, it was made very clear to me how it is difficult. It is emotionally challenging. It is hard to hear the things people say that you don't agree with and not just lash out and hate them and run back to the safety of your own kind of corner of the country. And, um, and so... You know, I, I, I had a, I had a breakdown at one point that was challenged, that was difficult. And, um, you know, but you, you, thankfully Laurent was there and took really good care of me and, um, and we moved forward. And, and at the end of the day, I have a closer relationship with my family in Texas now than I did before the documentary. So it proved my mother true, right. Uh, I understand more their perspective. I'm not going to vote the way they vote, but I understand a little more of what they're they think they're trying to protect which is similar to what i think i'm trying to protect which is family at the end of the day and and hopefully we can figure out more ways to not rip each other's rights away in that in that process um of protecting family and so you know i learned a lot and and the same held true when we went to the seat of mormon power in utah and so i uh I realized just how hard it was what my mother did i realized that it's gotten harder now than it was even when the book came out um, but I also have, it's been made clear to me just how critical this work is and that it can be fruitful. It won't always be, but it can be fruitful. And when you say what your mother did, you mean that um, she came from her stance of, you know, being taught by the church that, um, you know, being gay was a, a, a terrible sin to, you know, I guess, accepting you. I, I want to make it simpler than that. I'm yeah. so grateful that my mom made that change. But I, I want to make this step simpler than that, which mm. is she showed the courage just to share the space with people she disagreed with. How wonderful that she changed her mind. I mean, the thing is, I shared space with people both in Utah and Texas, and they did not change my mind. But I figured out that I didn't have to demonize them or wish for their destruction. That is the change that's happened. We have always had disagreements in this country and in families. Always, that's natural, that's gonna happen. We come from different backgrounds. We're not gonna always understand each other. What's changed in, our, in the temperature of our disagreements is that we now wish for the death and demise of those who disagree with us. And when you share space, that temperature comes down and we stop wishing for the death and destruction of the neighbor we disagree with. If we keep going in that direction, I'm telling you, it's, the future does not look bright for this country. Um, so I, I love that my mother changed my mind, but that's not even what I just want, would love for things to get back to the place where we can disagree 
without wishing our opponent dead. That's the, that's the hope. Yes. And let's talk about some of the, the beautiful um, photographs and home video that you um, incorporate. Uh, Lauren, how did you go about um, you know, deciding how to, to use that in the, the visual style of the film? Well, you, you know, um, um, I, one of the things, the first thing that Lance told me is like he has a suitcase full of, of treasures and he certainly delivered on that. And, and then it was a question of really finding uh, a, a visual style. Uh, if you ever watch the film a second time, you may notice that there's a, a hint of turquoise throughout most of the family interviews that I try to incorporate, even some, some that I added in, in post, uh, um, because I wanted to, to really have the sort of link between, even subliminally between all the people. And then treating the, the photos, uh, um, uh, we worked really hard with a, a uh, graphics company at uh, bringing kind of texture to the backgrounds with wood and, and colors and same thing, you know, uh, elements, uh, because there's something just so raw about the story. So we wanted to showcase all this material in a very kind of, you, you know, thematically. Uh, so a lot of work uh, was put into it, but that that initial treasure trove that Lance uh, was carrying this suitcase <laughs> through. I'm laughing because I'm just seeing you, Lance, with the with the suitcase throughout the airport and on our trips. And I didn't want to lend my hands on them until we're in LA because I was too afraid I was going to lose them. Uh, and so, so I wanted that to be a hundred percent responsibility on Lance. But uh, um, you know, it was it was great, and and um, it was also wonderful, albeit you know, heartbreaking to see the footage of his brother. And, and uh, I mean, you, you know, all of that brought the story to, to life for, for me, who never had the chance of meeting them in a, in a really uh, powerful and visual way. And again, I think we're very, very careful to showcase at a very specific time in the film. And, and I hope it resonates with people. Um, yeah, so so many beautiful photographs of um, your mother when she was y younger, and that smile on her face as she's, you know, persevering is is very special, and um, also really special to see your husband Tom um, meeting her on that Christmas. Um, very intimate footage to share, isn't it? But it's be really beautiful. Oh, thank you. I, we were very lucky. You know, my mother was dirt poor, incredibly poor, and that's clear. And so you wonder how did they have all these photographs and. The truth is that my grandmother, Koki, who I, I never got to meet, worked in a drugstore. And so she was able to get film and film processed for almost nothing. And so she would just snap away and just happen to have the job where they, they could barely afford to feed themselves, but they could have pictures. And, and, uh, and thank goodness for that. Yeah. So one last question um, for both of you, and it's for your um, favorite piece of LGBTQ plus culture. So it could be uh, a TV series, a film, a book, uh, play, musical, art, photography, anything you can think of, um, or a person who identifies as LGBTQ plus. So someone or something that's had an impact on you and resonated with you over the years and why. That's not fair. <laughs> uh, I'll get in so much trouble if I answer that question. Well, I'll just say Lance for me, you I'll know, obviously. Hey, listen, it's true. Uh, you gave me my next film and uh, and uh, something to, to, to tell that I hope will make a difference. So, 100%. I mean, I... I I'm Lance, someone that you already admired um, before. Oh. Oh, big time. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, like I said, you know, and and Lance was a hero for, for, for so many reasons. And uh, uh, I, I'm just so honored to have been able to tell his story. Yeah. Well, that, Laurent, I'm grateful. That makes me deeply uncomfortable. Um, but uh, thank you. I, uh, I, um, I, 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 I want, I hope you'll say that I can't answer the question um, because there are so many, and I'm in a position because of the research I've done to know how many stories are still mm -hmm. buried that I know, but the world doesn't know how much work we have to do to excavate our history of our foremothers and forefathers because it's been buried in fear and shame. 
Um, so I can't because we don't, we haven't even met them all yet. Unlike people, you know, from who, who share other histories, even other minorities who share histories that have been better excavated. Ours, we've just begun that work. Yeah. Um, but I'll say as someone who I admire regularly, uh, who, who makes, who brings us all joy, but I, I actually think there should be a sociological study um, uh, is RuPaul. And, and I know it's RuPaul's Drag Race and it's good fun, but I gotta say that show goes deep uh, if you're really paying attention. And, and, it's, it's, and, and week after week and you know, country after country now, there is, a, there is some real, there is a wonderful sense that it's okay to be as different as you wanna be. And in fact, that could be in an ideal world celebrated. And though these people are competing against one another, for the most part, they don't let it divide them. And I wish as a movement, we could remember that. And we can fight with each other, we can compete with each other, we can not stand each other sometimes because our differences don't align, but that we gotta stay united you got to be a family, and um, and I actually think that I think RuPaul is far more important than um, than we realize right now. Yeah, so I'll leave that one. I agree. Yeah, and a part of your um, work excavated um, is that the right word excavating? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, our our, our uh, LGBTQ history. Uh, you, we'll see Rust in next year, of course, that you've, yes. you've written the screenplay for. So, um, do, you know, do you hope that maybe people that are less aware of him perhaps as they might have been with Harvey Milk, might get yes. to know him through, through that film. That's the hope. I mean, I haven't seen it. I didn't get to produce it because I was busy doing Banner of Heaven. So I don't know how it is. Uh, I hope it's great because he was one of my heroes. I, I worked on that project for over a decade um, to get it to screen, uh, to share that history. And um, yeah, I, it's, but again, he's just another little stone in this vast mosaic that we have to rebuild. Well, Lance Laurent, thanks very much and congratulations again on uh, Mama's Boy. Thank you so much. Great to see you. Thank you both.